Well, hello. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. We're sitting here on the NDSU Foundation Director of Development and Social Media Takeover. And my name is Justin Swanson. And I'm a Director of Development for the College of Ag, Food Systems and Natural Resources at NDSU. I'm an NDSU graduate myself, twice over, a native of Maddox, North Dakota, a uh, longtime Bison fan and happy to be a part of our mission, what we're doing here at the foundation. And I'm joined today by one of our outstanding uh, agriculture majors at NDSU, who also happens to be a student athlete, uh, a defense lineman for the three-time defending national FCS champions, uh, Bison football team. We have Costner Ching uh, with us today from Castlewood, South Dakota. Uh, first of all, Costner, you know, how are you doing and how's life in Castlewood and, and what's going on uh, down in your neck of the woods? Yeah, hey, we're staying busy down here, Justin. Um, you know, from waking up in the morning to uh, just uh, working on the farm and getting the workouts in, you know, we're staying as busy as we can, cleaning everything. I mean, we clean just cleaned our garage out. That's been a while since we've done that. So, you know, it's just little things to keep a guy guy busy and keep a guy going throughout the day. Yeah, and that's one of the things you talk about, keeping busy, you know, keeping a guy going throughout the day. Is a student at NDSU and a successful one, I might add, someone who's been on the Missouri Valley honor roll and academic excellence list. Uh, very good in the classroom, but very good on the football field too. And as a student athlete, you guys are creatures of habit, creatures of routine. So just tell everyone out there, you know, how has your life, you know, been changed, whether it's academics, athletics, meal plans, working out, the going to class, taking tests. What's it like to be an NDSU student right now and to be a Bison student athlete? Yeah, um, so I'm getting up at 7 a.m. every day. And, you know, I was thinking the other day uh, with spring ball being done, you know, we used to get up at 4.30, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we'd be up at 6, Tuesday, Thursday. So it's a lot different setting an alarm for 6 a.m., you know, maybe hitting the snooze a couple times, waiting to get up. Um, after that, you get up, you get you get your breakfast because you know Coach Kramer's in your ear. You, you know, he can, he can sense it when you don't get your breakfast in. And then uh, it depends on if Dad needs me out um, on the farm or if he doesn't, I can get a workout in in the morning. So I'll go and do that workout, or if dad needs me to work, we'll come around 12, get get our meals in. You know, like I said before, Coach Kramer's in your ear. You can hear him. You get your meal in, and then uh, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, we're staying in touch with our position coaches. Um, just kind of they're checking in, they're going through the playbook, doing as much as they can uh, as with what they're given. And then uh, around that time, too, uh, and in the morning sometimes, I'll – check and see, you know, what I have to do if a uh, class has posted anything. The weird thing about this is, you know, one class might not have assignments, but then the next day it's going to have three, four, five assignments you have to do. And then those guys, I mean, the teachers, the professors are learning as we go as well. And uh, it's just staying on top, sifting through all the emails, you know, doing what's important. And uh, I brought this down. I figured I would. This has been a, a big thing of me, this planner here. I use it during when we didn't have online classes too. I've used it, but uh, it's just massive to check on it. You know, um, once something comes in, once an email comes in, I'll write something down uh, for that day and when it's due. So then I can just go up to my room, you know, check on it, see what ones I have due and just stay on top of things. It's like that old saying, uh, it's not planning that makes perfect. It's perfect planning that makes perfect. So I'm not exactly. surprised at all to see a Bison student athlete so meticulously prepared. And you talk about Coach Kramer now in meals. Is he checking in? You guys got to text him your weights and everything going through? So the first week, he just kind of wanted to see uh, what we're dealing with, what we have, the weight rooms we have. Um, and that was the video on Twitter. You, you've seen it. Uh, I didn't know he was going to post it, but he posted it. But uh, it's just kind of seeing what you have. And then he wanted to see, the, the you know, your forms, a couple videos of those, how they're going, and just kind of like staying on top. Um, he, he's been texting. He has groups. He has uh, teams, team works, a bunch of apps, just kind of staying in touch with you. And, um, you know, he's, he's given a couple calls. He's dropped a couple texts. Um, and he's, he's excited, on, you know, about the guys on the farm. He knows they're staying busy. So, uh no, he's uh he's staying in contact, and I I really appreciate everything he's doing right now. Now, and you mentioned too, uh, for those of us uh, tuning in, Costner's an agriculture major from Castlewood, South Dakota, and you talk about 
agriculture, rural America, one of the big issues facing us today is rural broadband and internet access. And now that's more important than ever with having to do everything online. Are you guys all wired up, good at the farm, wireless, no problem with connection? It's internet. It's not the best internet. Um, you know, I'm sitting over top of it right now. I just had to restart it because there was too many people on it. And uh, I'm running off my hotspot off my phone actually right now. So we don't lose this connection. But you know, it's internet. It can get done. Uh, you, you have to yell at each other to get off the internet here and then. But, um, you know, looking into upgrade, we don't know yet. But uh, we we have internet. So that's that's a positive. So now talk about your guys' operation there at the farm. You guys, um, grains, animals, what is the uh, what does it look like there? Yeah, so I like to start off by saying we dairied till 2012. And if you want to know what work was, dairying back in the day was, was tough. And then uh, we have a corn and beans, uh, about 900 to 1,000 acres. And then we also uh, started up a, well, we've had a beef uh, cattle operation. We're a finisher and uh, buy them around like 500 pounds. And then we have feedlots out here can get up to 300 head, but rarely is. Um, so we have a beef lot that's keeping us busy. And, um, you know, just the other day, I, I greased about 100 zerks on a uh, vertical tiller. And, uh, you know, just keeping busy. Um, that's that's all you can do. So, uh, and just like I said, uh, dairy, man, that was work. And uh, I respect I, every single dairy man out there that's still going. Amen. Yeah, you look at uh, whether it's our South Dakota guys, Minnesota, North Dakota, Wisconsin, those are the ones that grew up around a dairy farm for them, uh, getting up at 6 a.m., 5 a.m. to lift weights or do a two-day practice, that's that's sleeping in. That's that's working on a weekend. That's light work. Yep. And then you get your holidays off, too. So can't complain about that. Right. Now, are, are you sure your dad's going to let you come back to India shoot to play football when this is over? It sounds <laughs> like he's got you pretty busy out there. Yeah, I hope so. I, I think he will. I think he, he, he likes, uh, you know, I've, I've been on his hip pocket. When I was a kid, I was on his hip pocket just trying to learn. And um, I'm, I'm doing it now. Everything he does, I maybe he's getting irritable with me. I don't know. But I just keep asking, you know, why'd you do this? Um, when do you need to do this? And uh, I think we're going to start spreading manure here soon. Uh, so that should be fun. But, you know, it's just learning anything and everything you can. Uh, that's the best way you can learn is hands on and uh, learning from learning from the old man like he earned, learned from my grandpa. So and that's a great point, too. You know, farming uh, a lot of times in the upper Midwest, it's generational. It spreads out from grandfather to son, you know, and down the lines and generations. And so how far back does it go with you and your family on the farm there? You mentioned your grandpa, too, was uh, on the yep. farm. I'm a fifth year generation farmer. So fifth I will generation. be the same. Wow. Yep. That's fantastic. You know, same same farmstead, same homestead around Castlewood, or same farmstead, same land. We just bought uh, new land that uh, Dad kind of got his hands on, and uh, pretty excited about that. But the same land Grandpa farmed, and uh, same same farm. You know, they've always lived on. So that's fantastic. And, and you mentioned your dad. I, I told you this earlier. I did a little research on your bio at the uh, <laughs> Go Bison page and saw he played football at South Dakota State. So what was he that did. like when you're growing up in South Dakota and you're like, you know what, Dad, I, and yeah, she was calling. Uh, you got Coach Gazer calling you. Yeah, I want to be a bison. Man, uh, what helped with that, though, is uh, getting out of the dairy. Um, you know, back in the day, Dad had always came back and helped on the dairy. And uh, what helped with that is that was gone. So I could kind of, like, be free with it. So uh, I got a Facebook um, um, friend request from Coach Tyler Roll. All right, well, let's see what this is. And uh, all growing up, I wanted to be a jackrabbit, or I was expected to be a jackrabbit. And uh, he, he asked for film. Well, nine-man school, uh, we didn't have any really film production thing. So I put together these clips on a computer, and I recorded it off the computer with my phone. You can imagine the quality that was. Uh, it wasn't pretty, but Coach Roll took it, ran with it, loved it somehow um went up there with my with dad the first day i was up there and you know he was ready to run through a wall like i was uh after that day um he was excited about it he knew the culture he's told me before every time the jacks played the bison back in his day he got beat up by him so uh you know i i fell in love with it ssu really didn't recruit me hard you know i don't know if they thought 
a, a young uh, son of a former player would just kind of waltz in there and, uh, you know, follow in his footsteps. But um, one thing dad said to me was that carve your own path. And uh, that really stuck with me. I wanted to do my own thing. I didn't want to be Jeff Ching's son. And uh, I mean, I want to be, but um, I didn't want to be, you know, this, this guy's only here because of Jeff Ching is his old man played here. I wanted to carve my own path and um, man, I, I made the right decision. And uh, just the guys up there, man, I, every relationship I have up there is, it's, it's meaningful to me. Um, you know, I do anything for those guys. Those guys would do anything for me. That's what, you know, th this kind of stinks because you're away from those guys. You're supposed to be making memories. With those guys are supposed to be going through spring ball with those guys. Um, just miserable. <laughs> and yeah. it is, but yeah. um, that's what brings you together. That's what kind of makes that family we have. And um, I, I, I miss them, but, you know, this is the cards we're dealt with. I'm staying in contact with phones and um, anything you can do just to, uh, you know, keep them, keep updated and just keep that mesh. So, I mean, that film must have been pretty incredible for Coach Roll to see that through that grainy VCR yeah. computer nine-man film Man. have to be a bison. I've asked him before, why why did you go along with that? You know, why didn't you just throw that away? And he said, I loved it. It was, it was gritty and I, you know, it's props to him. Because I, 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 that day he asked for the film, I got it to him. So maybe that was one thing he respected about it. I don't know. So, you know, we talk about growing up in agriculture and growing up now, bison football player. And you look across the years, you know, whether it's, you know, you have the small town America, the, the Tuscas from out there in Warner. You have the Volsons from up in the Balfour area. You know, you even talk about from an egg standpoint, Brian Schatz on the defensive line coming up yep. from that background in Wisconsin. And now you have your head coach, Matt Enns, who comes from a, a farming background uh, as well. Yes, Do you guys ever talk about that, the days growing up on the farm, kind of share some battle stories? I tell you what, one of the reasons freshman year wasn't that bad was because me and Coach Enns would talk about farming and uh, even the other guys too. Um, the connections I made with uh, all the North Dakota farmers, you know, Goni Mauk is my roommate. Uh, he, he farms some land by Hankinson there. And uh, it's just kind of understanding what those guys went through and being like, man, these guys weren't that bad. And uh, they understood what I, what I went through. And, you know, uh, one thing Coach and I and Coach Ensign and I go back and forth about is uh, throwing hay bales, stacking hay bales. Man, that was some fun times, but it taught you how to work. And uh, that's uh, just one thing I really appreciate about it is those guys making that connection with you. And, uh, yeah, just – the farm guys uh, it's it's fun talking with those guys learning their practices you know never knew anything about sugar beets until my roommate Cody Mouth kind of educated me on it so it's just fun having those guys um, Carson Yagi's another guy uh, Jackson Hankey starting Mike linebacker just those guys sitting down talking farming it's it's so much fun uh, I love that that's so cool to hear you know and you, you talk about I think there's so many similarities between farming and athletics, football across the board, just that work ethic, the attention to detail, uh, being in it for the guy next to you. And one of the things too, anyone that farms or is around agriculture uh, probably knows what it's like to work through adversity. Uh, football game, you're playing James Madison in the title and they're marching down the field trying to score that game tying touchdown. So uh, how do your experience in farming and facing that adversity help you out when you're playing football to face some maybe adversity and tough times when you're on the field? Yeah, it's just powering through the hard times, you know, picking up what you got dealt with. Um, farming's you can't you can't handle some things, you know. Um, back in 2017, uh, we had a hailstorm that came through and uh, wiped out all of our crops. And you know, you just you it was the middle of June, and you you weigh your options, you understand what happened, um, but you move on. I mean, you don't dwell on it. Um, that's the same with football. Uh, incorporating it with football you could have messed up on that previous play doesn't matter keep going um that's back to that hailstorm in 2017 uh we understood what fields were destroyed we uh got back in the fields and we got planted and we got a harvest out of it you know and uh it's just that understanding that this is what i'm dealt with um you have to, you're gonna have to deal with it um and uh there's no really difference in football and we talked about it previously, um, Justin, uh, the, the milking. Um, man, I, I 
I, every morning I woke up uh, last year, 4.30 for spring ball, I said, you know, it could be worse. I could could be going down the, the road to uh, milk with my brothers and um, getting started. But that was some of the funnest times. Um, it taught you how to work. It uh, brought your family together. And um, that's just like football. Like I was, what I was saying previously, the hard times bring you together and you understand it. And uh, um, I read this book, 40 Chances. I don't know if you've heard about it. Um, Howard Buffett uh, wrote it. It's, um, it was given to me. Uh, and I'm supposed to read it while I am reading it for a class for Soil 410. And uh, at the beginning, uh, I love it. It's it's called 40 Chances because um, as a farmer, starting your own crop and uh, finishing it really only get 40 chances. And uh, he talks about how you should always just like forget about, you know, last year wasn't that great. Okay, well, here's another chance. Keep going. And uh, it's just not getting stuck on that treadmill, not getting stuck on the treadmill life, just going through the motions type thing. That's said every day at uh, football practice, stop going through the motions, start learning and uh, start getting better. And uh, it's, there's so many more similarities that you can, uh, um, you know, make relationships to. And uh, one of them as well, as well is, uh, you know, I'm going against a 300 pound guy, but then I think I've went head to head with a 1200 pound steer before. So, um, I'm, I'm not really afraid of that. Um, and then it's just accepting the challenges that, that, that have been given to me and, uh, working with the cards that have been dealt to me. I, you know, I love I, that mindset too. And, and I gotta ask you, was that, was that Dr. Casey that gave you that book? It, uh, <laughs> no, the setter. Thomas okay. the setter. Yep. Sure. I got the same one on my bookshelf too. It's a pretty neat read. Uh, so, Buster, team, I might pick up another dude. <laughs> so, you know, we, we talked about uh, growing up on the farm. You mentioned you were in your dad's hip pocket. Uh, so, obviously, a lot of learning there. But can you just touch on maybe the, the classroom experience at NDSU and what you've learned there from, you know, our wonderful faculty and staff just about uh, agriculture and practices and production? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, learning about like the different soil types. Um, that's a big thing. You know, you really don't understand here. Uh, that's one thing we're also talking about. And uh, precision egg has been a big thing for me. Um, Dad really doesn't know much about it. We don't have yes, but he, he says, you know, you come back when you learn about, um, you know, the best things out and you taking you know, understanding like all right let's put in this system because this is the best one understanding variable rate is the big one we've been um, discussing in class too um variable rate how much that helps and uh just one thing i really bummed about going to online is we were we had this engines class um and we we were going through all different types of engines understanding how they work man i i learned so much from that class and it was hands-on um farming hands on um you could we were supposed to take apart and rebuild an engine i was so excited for that but you know this is the car yep yeah absolutely and, and for those watching out there we i think have a little maybe technical difficulties right now maybe a tough connection we'll just hang on here a little bit too um costner can you hear me on the other end still i can hear you is okay. my hold on is it working? Yeah, I can hear you and see you. So maybe before the connection gets, uh, I don't want to drop you again. I'll finish up with two questions here. And one of the things we talked about beforehand was maybe that uh, the holy cow moment when you're sitting out there oh, yeah. and as a Division One football player, like you remember that kind of when it hit you or you got that wide eyed, you're like, oh my gosh, this is this is bison football. This is a big time. There's one play that comes to me, and uh, I think you guys all know him, Chris Board. Uh, he's now playing for the Baltimore Ravens. I was uh, on scout team. I was a fullback before I went to D tackle, and I was supposed to kick him out on a power play. And I, I ran as hard as I could, trying to give the best look I could. And I smacked him. And man, did that! I, I saw stars. I saw everything. And uh, that was my welcome to college football moment. Like this is no joke type of thing. I've had other ones, but that's one that sticks with me forever. 
And a little bit different than hitting somebody from Volga, South Dakota, right? Oh, it is, man. He's he's a stud, and that's the way, and that's why he's in the NFL. You know, and this has been wonderful, Costner, and I appreciate so much you taking the time to you know let the people out there, our friends, our alumni, supporters, know what our students are going through right now. And it's so great to see. It just sounds like you have a tremendous work ethic and such a great attitude as we you know plow through this thing. And and I have no doubt, you know, as a university and a foundation in Bison football and Bison athletics, we're going to come out of this thing stronger on the other end. And for our audience out there today, a lot of them are our alumni, our supporters, our donors. And can you just touch on, you know, what it means to you as a student and a student athlete to have that opportunity to have a scholarship and and chase your dreams and get a degree from a school like NDSU? Yeah, I mean, it means a lot. Um, uh, to be honest, Justin, I'm, I'm still a walk-on right now. But, uh, you know, we're in talks of a, of a scholarship, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited for it. But, uh, you know, it's going to mean a lot, a lot, a lot of less pressure on um, dad. Um, he can focus more on the farm instead of me. Um, just I'm excited for it. Well, let's, uh, let's get that done there, uh, Coach Ensign. Uh, yeah. Coach Ron, you're listening online right here. But, no, uh, uh, Costner, thank you so much for taking the, the time today to chat. And, um, you know, we're thinking about all of our students. And I uh, we'll wish you and your family the best down there and stay healthy and, and stay safe. When the time's right, we'll get you guys back to campus and we'll fire up some bison football. And I can't wait to see the Morrill Hall and everywhere else packed with the green and gold when we get this thing started back up. I'm excited to get back to reality, too, Justin. I appreciate you giving me the call. You bet. All right, Costner, appreciate it. Go Bison. Go Bison.